Where are the Fretlands, Edward? It's been two days. If they're not back tonight... They're not coming back. Perhaps they left after their daughter died. Was murdered, you mean? Isn't that what we think happened? She was probably murdered. And you think Simon did it? Your guess is as good as mine. It could have been an accident. You're really not helping. Can we talk about this tomorrow? I'm sorry. You're exhausted. I buried a corpse today, Alice. I know. I'm sorry. Why don't you sleep in the guest bedroom? The couch is fine. The Fretlands could still come home. All right. Just don't come crying to me if you wake up with a crick in your neck. I'll be up for a while, if you feel like talking. What did you find? Someone tried to burn this. Just like the book. Isn't that odd? It's addressed to Mrs. Fretland. My dearest Anna. It's from her sister, Margaret. I really shouldn't. Really? How else are we going to figure out what happened? Keep reading. My dearest Anna, I miss you so very, very much. The baby is due soon, and I wish for our family to reunite before... Da-da-da-da. It's been seven years since the dreadful incident at the mine. Can we not convince Frederick and Johan to forgive and forget? Uh, I know there are things Frederick has not told me about what they found and why they parted ways. Their grudge is tearing us all apart. Frederick won't even let me speak to half of our neighbors, accusing them of treason. He's so very angry and full of regrets. It's eating him up. And we... And we what? The rest is unreadable. Margaret reached out to her sister. But I guess it didn't work. This was written before Simon was born. But burned recently. What are you doing? Betty will want these back. I don't think it's healthy Not now, to... please. I'm exhausted. You do look exhausted. Go to bed, Edward. I'll tuck you in. Quite the day, huh? I'm ready to pass out. Where will you sleep? Uh, I'll be up for a while. My mind's simply racing. Don't stay up late. Wake me if you hear the Fretlands arriving. Of course. And I'll keep my eyes open for any ghosts that might want to haunt you in your sleep. There are no... Hush now. Sleep. <laughs> Where are you? Upstairs. Teddy? Is that you? Lissy? Right up the stairs, Teddy. Is 
This is her room. Hmm? Are you paying attention? Ruth, can you imagine? One moment you're living a perfectly happy life, and then nothing. Darkness forever and ever. Maybe there's something here that can tell us what happened to her. This is a waste of my time. We might be the only ones left to tell her story, Edward. You're just being melodramatic. I'll help you look. There's still no sign of the Frontlands. Maybe they left town after Ruth died. What's the point of this? I should be looking for Betty. I hate you sometimes. Draugen. Hey, the undead monster from those folk tales you read. What an odd book for a child to have. I don't know. Children love scary stories. This looks interesting. Read some of it to me, please. In Norwegian folklore, the appearance of Draugen, the reanimated corpse of a drowned mariner, heralds death. Draugen haunts the Black Seas in a shattered boat. The beast has a man's body and wears a sou'wester, but instead of a head, there is tangled seaweed, and the revenant's chilling cry freezes mortal blood to ice. Draugen has the power to enter the dreams of the living. If you wake from such a dream, you have been spared, though someone close to you... That's enough of that. It's nonsense, of course. Not something a child should be reading. Do you think Draugen took our boat? Maybe he's out there, on the fjord, waiting for nightfall so he can return to shore. No. And... Your soul lacks poetry, Edward Charles Harden. I pity you. Ruth was an artist. This is very primitive. Have you ever met a child, Edward? She wasn't Monet. She was eight. This must be the village church. That's Ruth and her family on one side of the aisle. Simon and his father on the other. A community divided. She made her bed that morning. Before she... Or her parents did. It doesn't matter. It tells us nothing. Why are you like this today? Betty's not the only person in the world that matters. She matters the most to me. Ain't that the truth? That must be Ruth and Simon's fathers. Perhaps. They weren't on the best of terms. They look like they want to kill each other. To a child, maybe it looked worse than it was. Children are more insightful than you give them credit for, Teddy Bear. She found something. Where's that supposed to be? A cave. Or the... Mine. It could be. But what did she find? Something important enough to draw. Ruth never finished this. What does that spell? F-O-R-B. For Banelson. The curse. Who is that figure supposed to be? It's creepy. It looks a bit like the dragon in her book. A figment of her imagination. But the box she drew. It looks like this box under her desk. Really? Let me see. Pull it out. What is this? 
I believe this might qualify as actual treasure. Is that Norwegian money? Sort of, but ancient. Viking coins. Are they valuable? Not in terms of monetary value, but historically. Well, they belong in a museum. Looks like Ruth had her own private museum. Why would a child have these artifacts? She must have enjoyed collecting and playing with them. These are much too precious to play with. She should have given these to an adult. She's... She was a child, Edward. To her, they were just shiny toys. Wait! The pin! On the doll! This is where it came from. Her collection. But where did she find these treasures? If we're to believe her drawing, perhaps the mine. She may have found a gravesite. Wherever she found them, she wanted to keep them hidden. You think someone found out? These items wouldn't necessarily be worth much, except to a historian or archaeologist. What if this is how... I mean, if someone learned she'd been collecting treasures, they might be willing to do terrible things. There's a story here. The treasure box, the drawings. The overactive mind of an imaginative child. Well, she didn't imagine the Viking artifacts. You shouldn't be so dismissive. The drawings could be her way of dealing with traumatic this events. This is what happens when I read you the principles of psychology. You get notions. You say that like it's a bad thing. Ruth was troubled. The village was troubled. And is that a bell? A church bell. Someone's here. Maybe Betty. Why would Betty ring the church bell? Perhaps she's in trouble. I need to get to the church right now. Wait, isn't it more likely to be the person you saw the other night? We should I be I told careful. you, I'm not sure that was anything. Come on. Go ahead. I'll catch up with you before you get there. I need a minute to think about... about all of this. of the accident at the mine this past summer. No services after that. All these fresh graves. Do you think that maybe no. Betty... No. I'd know. But... You wouldn't understand. Why board up a church? To keep the ghosts from escaping? Regardless of how they got past the wall. Gone fishing? <clears throat> God is not here. Well, of course he isn't. You won't find God in a church. God is the wind in the trees, the grass between your toes, the brook that That's runs through. nature, not God. Who did this? Someone who lost their faith. Can you peek through the boards? anyone? No. Listen! I... The bell! They're still in there! Hello? I heard 
heard the bell! This is giving me I'm here to help! Babies. These boards look flimsy enough to break. Edward Harden. Uh, I'm looking for my sister, Stop Elizabeth. Stop shouting, Edward. We're alone. There are only ghosts here. There are no ghosts. I don't know about that. Lissy. Look. Betty's gloves. They are definitely Betty's. Oh, she got these sake. in Boston before she left for New York. She bought them at Woolworth. I remember the day she... She's here. Where? And why would she leave her clothes lying around? It doesn't make Bread sense. Gloves. She's sending me a message. She knew I'd recognize her gloves. Her hat. She's left a trail for me to follow, like Ariadne's red thread. We're not in the lab. Betty would have left more crumbs. Betty, 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 you're turning into such a pill. What happened here? The sign on the door. God is not here. Their faith was challenged, and it didn't survive. The church book, a record of births and deaths. So we can find out what happened to the people in the village? And, uh, Elizabeth. I mean, if she was dead... Her name would be in the book. Tore it to pieces. I don't think the missing pages left the church. Look. How many pages are missing? I counted four. They're probably all still here. I know. Let's make it a competition. One nil to team me. Isn't this a fire hazard? They're not always lit. Each candle represents a single prayer. That's a lot of prayers. There were a lot of deaths. They considered this a sacred place. For them to destroy it. This was an act of desperation. And anger. The final dinner. The last supper. Who taught you about the New Testament? I pick up on things. Most folks aren't heathens, like you. Jesus looks sad. What reason would Jesus have to be happy? Don't be blasphemous. Given that this is all fiction, blasphemy is a contradiction. Heretic. I've never seen you read the Bible before. I've read the Bible many times. It's an important historical document. What's that? The last sermon that was held here. What does it say? Uh, the vicar's handwriting is hard to decipher in the language. Uh, hmm. He talks about the village being divided for 20 years. This sermon was held on the anniversary of the accident this past summer. He's asking the congregation to help heal old wounds, to forgive move on. Something to the effect of you sit in separate aisles in God's house. Like Ruth's drawing. I told you, she was perceptive. Tilly Verandre. Edward? Forgive each other. It addresses Johann and Frederick directly. But I wonder if they were even here. Well, they were twin brothers. They must have been close once. How could they allow their grudge to escalate until... <sighs> you call each other traitors. 
But the only thing you've betrayed are the bonds that unite us. It sounds like Grovik was split in two. Between those who stood by Johan and those who supported Frederick. Because of Ruth? The sermon is from before that. No, this is all about the preceding 20 years of division and disagreements. Here's something else. Many of you believe Grovik was cursed 20 years ago. God has not cursed you. This curse is of your own making. Ruth's drawing mentioned a curse. What do you think that means? It means they believed they were cursed, and that they needed something or someone to blame for their misfortune. I wanted you to find that one. I know what a rotten loser you are. What are you doing? We're in a church. I thought you didn't believe in God. I do believe in civility. You get it. It's right here. Just one more page missing. What's this rope for? The bell. This is the bell we heard ringing? I don't see any other bells. So you have to stand here and pull this rope to ring it? Yes. But there was no one here. You didn't see anyone, right? No. No one. Ghosts. I'm telling you. It's ghosts! So what happened to the hunchback of Grovik? They must be here still. There's only the one exit. Maybe it was the wind. A church bell's too heavy. It can't have been the wind. I mean... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was the wind. There's no one here. I don't like that sound. Please stop. Two for two. A tie. Good job, Teddy. Stop, Old Bean. Lissy. This is not a game. Betty's out there. Of oh, horse feathers. Stop being so gosh darn tedious, Edward. Betty, 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 will you ever shut up about your precious Betty? Put those pages back in the book, and I'll stop trying to cheer you up. <laughs> 